Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, you know the rest. I don't need to get into that. Today we're going to be going over my take on basically a budget Fury Druid. It's one of my preferred characters to play. Absolutely love the Wolf Druids. Uh, I haven't really put enough time in on the new bear setup to have any kind of an opinion on it. I'll get there. I'm just not there yet. So, I'll just get right into it. The gear setup. Jalal's might be a little bit difficult to find for some people at some points, but it's it's budget, realistically. It doesn't have to be a good one. Anything will do. The stats are fantastic on it. It's not really much else to say about that. Uh, you can go with Angelic Wings and Halo, so the Amulet in the Ring. Gives you a boatload of attack rating. Ten to Dex, some life. It It's good. Uh, for this particular build, I'm just running a Minald heal. Yes, this is a 7%, which I think that's perfect. I don't remember off the top of my head. But, any will do. Again, this is super budget. Mortal King's boot, belt, and gloves. I'll hover for the stats for you for a moment. In case you aren't familiar with them. It's a good, cheap, easy to find three piece set that gives fantastic bonuses. Especially now that uh, with 2.4 coming out and them basically, in my opinion, fixing the uh, Wolf Druid's attack speed. I know some people preferred the other variant of it, but it was confusing for a lot of people, myself included, have, and I've been playing this game for 20 years. Over 20 years. So, I'm happier that it's been much simplified. Thank you, Blizzard. Thank you... I can't remember the name of the studio that was a subsidiary that made this. But it doesn't matter. Back to it. You got just a Durial shell. You find a ton of these. They're great little armor. And if it's all you got, you can even upgrade it. It'll give it... Uh, 1500-ish defense. Somewhere around there. Which is fantastic. For, you know, 1500 defense armor. Oh, it would actually be even higher because of the plus the defense based on character level. But... It's the rest of the stats that are good. The defense is kind of pointless a lot of the time. Uh, but yeah, those are the stats. It's good. I highly recommend it if you don't have a good rune word. And the main piece, the weapon. Uh, I only have this in a Grim Scythe currently. It would be even better in an elite version. I think it's Giant Thresher or something like that. Thresher, Giant... Uh, Thresher and the Giant Thresher are the two fastest attack speed weapons for the Wolf Druid. So, this is the absolute fastest, but if you go with the Elite one, it'll do I don't know, somewhere around five, 600 printed damage on the weapon, which will be a lot better. This is just currently the only one that I have, so even I'm stuck on a budget on this one, because I just don't have the base weapon for it yet. Uh, my charms are nothing special or fancy. Just some lifers that I've found. A little bit of damage. I've got 4 plus 20 to life charms. I found them all, personally. Like, all of my charms are self-found. 100%. I do not trade for charms. Uh, but I'm intentionally leaving these 12 slots open. So that way, you know... It doesn't really... Your charm layout could be different than mine. It doesn't have to be this. Uh, you could go with a more damage-heavy route if you wanted. Uh, it's perfectly okay. And the nice thing about the Druid is if you want more life, you can set your charms that way and use an Oak Sage. If you want more damage, you can set your charms that way and use a Heart of Wolverine. Both are very good spirits. It all depends on how you want to play the game. Uh, my stats, I could actually get away, I think, with this build with only 100 base strength. I don't remember off the top of my head. I did the numbers a few days ago, and then just never got around to making the video. So, 
I believe I needed the 100 base dexterity. And then the rest literally just goes into your vitality. Uh, that's pretty much the way to build a character in this game, is you set your strength and dexterity to whatever you're going to need to use your equipment at the absolute minimum, and then the rest into vitality, because life is king. Uh, my skills, again, uh, you've got Oak Sage and Heart of Wolverine. It's You can put into both of them if you want. It's nice to be able to switch it up. And if you're going a budget route, you're definitely not going a min-max route, so why not? Sorry, my allergies. Uh, you max out your lycanthropy and your werewolf, because of course you do. They're your two base skills. Uh, I maxed out Fury, obviously. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't have any synergies, but is what it is. Uh, one into rabies because you have to to get to fury and then basically the way that I build it the rest of the way is you can either put some points into feral rage or you can start pumping into whichever other or get them both up to I don't know I think like level 17 or something like that but as I was saying let's go kill some stuff see how we do and keep in mind, this is with a Grim Scythe Obedience that does 329. This is Hell Difficulty. We are in Act 5. It's only the first waypoint, but... And it's also only Player's 1. He kills just fine. You do have to be careful, as with any budget setup, though. Your resistances aren't that great. Now, something you could do, since a low druid uh, Hellfire Torch is generally somewhere around the neighborhood of like an Omrune to trade for it, you can do that. And then you've got, you know, three more to skills and minimum of 10 to all your stats and resistances. Now, I have one, but this is a budget build, so I'm not using it. And as you can see, you just kind of slap around everything. Like, I doubt this build could do council, though. Uh, they hit just insanely hard. I'm not going to get that shrine because that just kind of... ...defeats the purpose. But you can go through, I dare say, everywhere in hell with this build, as long as you're careful. Uh, make sure you've got potions. I don't at the moment, but again, I've been playing this game for 20 years, so I know well enough to not get myself into a situation too bad with limited health recovery options. But that's the nice thing about Feral Rage. Not only do you run faster. Hey. Ooh, what do we got? Ooh. Ooh. Very nice. Ah. I.O. Rune. I don't need it. I wish it was the other one that you always think it is at first, and then you're just, aww. But this is actually a halfway decent area for runes, too. Honestly, I've pulled uh, two Sir runes off of Shank and his pack. I pull, you know, Ists and Mal all day out here. And you can just kill everything. Like, special packs and all that might give you a little bit of trouble, but they're special packs, and this is a budget build, so I'd be surprised if they didn't. But, like, 
You can see it. And it only gets better. Like I said, this is only a exceptional. It's not even an elite. So, what do we got? Didn't mean to pick that up. Don't need it. But anyway, I'm digressing a lot. Uh, <clears throat> just kill that final group and head back to town for some final thoughts. Like I said earlier, this is one of my favorite builds to play. Uh, always has been just... I remember spending a lot of time, I think it was level 94 or 95, uh, back in patch 1.09, however the hell many years ago that was. Uh, and it was a blast. It's a blast now. And realistically, not a whole lot has changed since then. Like, this hasn't really changed. This hasn't really changed. None of this build has changed in 15 or so years. So I think that's a testament like to how good it is. Yes, it's gotten buffs lately and it was painful at times to play before, but now it's genuinely good. Uh probably not on par with a zealer, but it's not a paladin. Paladins are OP. So, with that being said, I'll end this here. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.